In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the area of a shader region. So let's say if we have a square inside of a rectangle. And let's say the side length of the square is 5 inches. And the rectangle, let's say it's 8 by 10. Calculate the area of the shader region. To calculate the area of the shader region, you need to find the difference between the area of the large object and the area of the small object. So in this example, the area of the shader region is going to be the area of the rectangle minus the area of the square. The area of the rectangle is the length times the width. The area of the square is side squared. So in this case, the length of the rectangle is 10, the width is 8, and s is 5 for the square. So it's 10 times 8 minus 5 squared. So the area of the rectangle is 80. The area of the square is 25. And 80 minus 25 is 55. So the area of the shader region is 55 square units, or inches squared. Now let's try another example. So let's say if we have a square and there's a circle inside of the square. And let's say the radius of the circle is 8 units. And let's say the square is 20 units each side. With this information, calculate the area of the shaded region. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. So we have the side length of the square and the radius. So the area of the shader region is the area of the larger object, which is the square, minus the area of the smaller object, which is the circle. Now we know the area of the square is s squared. The area of the circle is pi r squared. So this is going to be 20 squared minus pi times 8 squared. Now 20 squared, or 20 times 20, that's 400. 8 times 8 is 64. So the exact answer is 400 minus 64 pi. Now let's get this answer in terms of a decimal. And so this comes out to be 198.9 square units. So that's the answer. Let's try another simple problem before we start working on the harder problems. So let's say there's a circle within another circle. And the inner radius, let's say it's 4 units long. And let's say the outer radius is 7 units long. So with this information, calculate the area of the shader region. So the area of the shader region is the difference between the area of the large circle minus the area of the small circle. So for the large circle, it's going to be pi r squared, but using the outer radius. And for the small circle, it's pi r squared, but using the inner radius. So the outer radius is 7. The inner radius is 4. 7 squared is 49. 4 squared is 16. So it's 49 pi minus 16 pi. And that's going to be 33 pi. So that's the area of the shader region. That's the exact answer. Now let's try some harder problems. So let's say this is the center of the circle. And let's call this A, B, and C. So B is the center, and it's also a right angle. And let's say the radius of the circle is 8. What is the area of the shader region? The area of the shader region is going to be the difference between the area of the large object, which is the circle, minus the area of the small object, which is the triangle. The area of a circle is pi r squared, and the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So we have the radius. Notice that AB is the radius, and also BC is the radius as well. 
So A, B, and B, C is 8. The distance between the center and any point on a circle is the radius of the circle. Now notice that the radius is also the base of the triangle, and it's also the height of the triangle as well. So 8 squared is 64, and half of 64 is 32. So this is the area. It's 64 pi minus 32. And so as a decimal, that's 169.1 .1 square units. So that's the answer. Here's another example. So let's say if we have a rectangle, and inside the rectangle, we have a rhombus. Now let's say this side of the rectangle is 8. And this part of the rhombus is 5. What is the area of the shader region? Go ahead and try this problem. So the area of the shader region is the difference between the area of the rectangle and the area of the rhombus. So let's draw the diagonals of the rectangle. The area of a rectangle is length times width. The area of a rhombus is 1 half of d1 times d2. So d1 is basically the same as the width of the rectangle. And d2 is the same as the length of the rectangle in this example. So I'm going to replace d1 with w and d2 with l. So LW minus 1 half LW will just be 1 half LW. So we have the width already. W is 8. What we need to do is calculate the length, and then we can calculate the area of the shader region. So how can we do this? Well, we need to know that the diagonals of a rhombus, they meet at right angles. And also, they bisect each other. So these two sides are congruent, and those two segments are congruent. So therefore, as D1 is 8, that means that these two sides, they're 4. Let's call this A, B, C, D, E. So now we need to calculate segment AE and EC, or just EC. So notice that we have a right triangle, so we could find a missing side. This side is 4, this side is 5. So let's calculate A. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So C is 5 and B is 4. So 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16. 25 minus 16 is 9. And so if we take the square root of both sides, A is 3. So now we have everything that we need in order to calculate the area. So if EC is 3, AE is also 3, which means that the length of the triangle, I mean the length of the rectangle, is 6. 3 plus 3 is 6. So the area is going to be 1 half times 6 times 8. Half of 6 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. So the area is 24 square units. Now let's say if we have a circle, and let's say there's a triangle around the circle. And let's say the radius of the circle is 20. What is the area of the shader region? Now last time when we had a circle and a rectangle, the rectangle was a square because the circle is even all around. So this type of triangle around a circle has to be an equilateral triangle. And notice that if you draw a line where it touches the triangle and the circle, that's R. And notice it's the same 
everywhere for all three points where the circle meets the triangle. So you need to realize that this is an equilateral triangle. And so if we can calculate S, we can calculate the area of the equilateral triangle. So R is 20. Let's turn this into a right triangle. So this side is 20. How can we calculate this part? Because if this is S, then this part is half of S. All we need is an angle. If we could find one of these two angles, then we can do it. So the question is, how can we find one of those angles? So notice that if we draw a line between a center and the vertex of the triangle, we can draw three of such lines. And the angle of a full circle is 360. So if you take 360 and divide it by 3, that will give you 120, which is this angle. And that's also this angle. So therefore, this angle here must be half of 120, which is 60. So if this angle is 60, the other one is 30. So we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now, across the 30, let's say this is 2. The side across the 30 is going to be half of the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1. And the side across the 60 is whatever this value is times the square root of 3. Now, we have this side across the 20, I mean across the 30, which is 20. So the hypotenuse is twice that value, it's 40. And so the side across the 60 is whatever this is times the square root of 3. So it's 20 square root 3. And so that's s over 2. So if that's half of s, s itself has to be twice the value. So s is 40 square root 3. And so now we have enough information to calculate the area of the shaded region. The area of the shaded region is going to be the area of the triangle minus the area of the circle. The area of an equilateral triangle is the square root of 3 divided by 4 times s squared. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So s is 40 square root 3. And r r is 20. That was given to us at the beginning. Now 40 squared, that's 40 times 40, that's 1600. And the square root of 3 squared is just 3. 20 times 20 is 400. Now 1600 divided by 4, that's 400. And 400 times 3 is 1200. So the area is going to be 1200 square root 3 minus 400 pi. So this is the exact answer for the area of the shaded region.